The next step in our journey is to find the website from which quotes will be collected. After doing some research, I found an interesting candidate, uh, which is QuoteDB.com. Let's have a look. If you go to the website, you will see that quotes are sorted by category. We can also view quotes uh, by different people. And there is alphabetical sorting as well. Let's just click on one of them and see what happens. So here's what we have. The quote itself, uh, the author, and the category. Um, let's try something else. Another quote from the same person. Same thing, the quote itself, the author, and the category. Now here's another thing you have to take a look at, which is the address bar. This quote has the address quotedb.com slash quote slash 4190. If we click on another one, we see that the address changes. It's just a different number. Let's try to randomly go elsewhere. Let's say 368. So I chose a random number, yet it points us to some valid content. In this case, in this case it's another quote by C.S. Lewis. Uh, let's try quotes one. All right, another quote by Winston Churchill. And just to keep things interesting, let's try this one. It's still valid. Let's try this one. OK, there is no such thing. It means that in their database, they don't have as much as 6,900 quotes. Let's go here. All right, none. All right, so we can say that based on our little experiment here, they have uh, at least 3,900 quotes. So we can go to any of those quotes by uh, just typing this address and adding a number to the end. And that number shouldn't be above 4,000. As we've seen, if we try bigger numbers, they don't have such content. Let's have a look at some uh, technical charts to see exactly what we are going to do. The internet works with a protocol we call HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Uh, there is such a thing as a server, that is the site uh, which we open, and a client, which is a browser that we use to open the site. In my case, uh, the client is Chrome and the server, it could be anything. It doesn't matter because any client can talk to any server as long as they both uh, stick to the conventions given in the HTTP protocol. So this is how things work. Uh, if this is a client and this is a server, the, ser the client sends a message to the server indicating that it wants to retrieve a certain page. And the page is specified by a URL or in plain English, the address. For example, in this case, it's um, quotesdb.com slash some number. The server thinks for a while and then it sends back a response, usually in the form of an HTML payload. The browser takes this HTML, uh, analyzes it, transforms it, um, depending on what the HTML is about, and displays it to us in some human readable form. In our case, it's quotes with pictures, uh, font styles, and so on. Now let's try and make a little experiment with Python. Python has a library called urllib. 
this library gives us a bunch of functions which we can use to retrieve data from websites. Um, let's create an object. Uh, the function we need is URL open, which takes the address at the input. So let's go here, select the text, and paste it into our code. Now the data can be obtained by calling the read function of the u object, which is uh, of the URL lib type. Now it has successfully read something. If I print the data, we see quite a lot of mumbo jumbo, which happens to be HTML. The browser takes all these instructions and transforms them into this pictures, colors, tables, and so on. Now, searching here isn't very convenient, so I'm just going to write this uh, into a file. What I'm about to do here is open a file called testquote.txt on D with write access and write the contents of the variable data into it. Okay, it was done. Uh, now let's go to D and look for this file, test quote. Okay, so here is the HTML and the quote we are looking for is people who are not in love, blah, blah, blah. Now let's look for that. We see that the quote can be found in several places. One of them is the title tag. The other one is the meta keywords, then the meta description, then elsewhere in the body of the page itself, then another instance of the quote, then another one and another one. Hmm. Okay, so there are several occurrences of the quote which we are looking for. Uh, let's see what else we want. We would probably like to extract this information to see who the author of the quote is. Marcel Proust. Okay, let's look for that. Mm -hmm. So it's still present once in the title. Then again in the meta keyword section, description. Some link somewhere. Here it is again. And perhaps we also want to know the, the, um, the category, love. So just to make sure that our HTML page contains what we're looking for. Yes, categories love, title love. Mm -hmm. So based on this feedback, we can make some plans. First, uh, we have to receive the HTML. Request quote, receive the HTML content. Then we have to search the HTML content and extract our data. We have examined that uh, the data are indeed here in the response sent to us uh, by the server. So all we have to do now is figure out how to extract that easily. Besides that, uh, you have also seen how we can use URL lib to access the contents of a page and retrieve the HTML. 
Besides that, we have also seen how QuotesDB works. We established that all the quotes can be accessed using this URL just by changing this number. So it means that we will have to have some kind of a for loop which will go through all these addresses beginning with one and ending with, let's say, this one. This way we can automate the process and um, extract the data we need from each of the pages without doing this by hand. Because, you know, uh, 3,900 pages is quite a lot of work. We're going to have to write a program which does all the actions for us. In the next step, we will examine how to find, how to extract the data from the HTML such that we don't have to do this too hard and um, with less effort. See you soon.